Hess's law states that the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is the same whether the reaction takes place in one step or in a series of steps. Here's the reaction between magnesium metal and oxygen gas. It's a highly energetic chemical reaction. It's really difficult to measure the heat released during that chemical reaction. Now here are some other chemical reactions that can produce the same result. These reactions contain the magnesium and we also have the oxygen and we also have the magnesium oxide. So those are the three parts of our chemical reaction uh, between magnesium and oxygen to produce magnesium oxide. Now Hess's law states that if I could get these three steps to equal our overall chemical reaction, the enthalpy change for each of these three steps, if I add them all up, is going to be the same for that chemical reaction that I can't measure the enthalpy change of. So why would I want to use these three steps anyway? So well, these are really easy to find the enthalpy change of, and so I can find these experimentally and then go ahead and add them to get the enthalpy change of the one I can't find. Here's how Hess's law works. There's two steps or rules that we have to follow when we add chemical reactions together. If the same compound appears on opposite sides of the two different chemical reactions, those compounds are going to cancel each other. And if the same compound appears on the same side of two different chemical reactions, those compounds are going to add to each other. So I want all of this stuff to add together to produce this answer. That's the answer I want. Let's look at the way that these reactions are set up to see if we actually get that. So I'm going to look to see if anything's going to cancel or add. So I find the first thing here, magnesium oxide. I don't see that anywhere else in any of the chemical reactions. So I'm going to bring that down to the bottom. Next thing I see here is the HCl. And there are two HCLs here and two HCLs here. They're on the same side. I don't see it anywhere else in the other chemical reaction. And so these are going to be additives. So they're going to make four HCLs. And then I see magnesium here. I don't see magnesium by itself anywhere else. And so I'm going to bring magnesium down. And then I also see hydrogen gas. I see it here. And then I also see it over here. And so this time, we actually get something to cancel. So since it appeared on the opposite sides, they're going to cancel each other. Next thing I see is the oxygen gas. I don't see that anywhere else in any of the other chemical reactions, so I'll bring that down as well. Now I'll look at the other side, and I have magnesium chloride here and here. So they're going to add together to give me two magnesium chlorides. And then I have water here and here, so they're going to add together to give two waters. Okay, the way that these equations are set up, my answer is this when I add them together, not even close to what I'm actually looking for. So what I can do is I can modify these chemical reactions in two different ways so that I can cancel out the things I don't want and leave me with these, the compounds that I do want. So here are the two ways that I can modify a chemical equation. First of all, I can flip a chemical equation. I can just reverse the products and the reactants. And then I can also multiply or divide an equation by any whole number. Let's see what those look like. I'm going to bring back my three different steps here. And I've also added in the enthalpy change for each of those steps because if we modify these chemical reactions, this is going to be modified as well. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we know what this stuff should equal. We know what our answer should be. It's that equation that we started with here. Magnesium solid plus O2 gas gives us magnesium oxide. So we're going to modify some things. First of all, what I like to do is check out uh, the, the reactants and products in the top here and see are they even on the correct side. So I want to have magnesium and oxygen. This is actually one half oxygen on the reactant side or left side and I want to have magnesium oxide on the right side so I do see magnesiums on the correct side and oxygens on the correct side but magnesium oxide is on the wrong side so I can actually flip this chemical reaction around I'm going to bring the products over here and the reactants over there so why don't I make that switch and there we go. Now we have everything on the right side. When I make a switch, when I flip a chemical reaction like that, it's also going to change the sign of the enthalpy change. So it's going to do the exact opposite. So instead of negative 124, this is going to be positive 124 now. Okay, let's go ahead and see if anything's going to cancel. So I have, uh, first off, I have magnesium chloride here and here, opposite sides. I have uh, water here and here, also opposite sides. I have hydrogen here and here, and I have hydrochloric acid here and here. And I am left with magnesium oxide, 
magnesium solid and the O2 gas and so I have my answer that's exactly what I want now I can go over to the enthalpies and I just simply add them all up just the way they are written so when I take positive 124 and add to that negative 442 and negative 286 I'm gonna get an enthalpy change of negative 604 kilojoules and that makes sense because the negative sign is saying that this is highly exothermic because it's a pretty big number and this did release a lot of energy when the reaction took place so let's try one more this is a way that you would commonly find these type of questions written in a chemistry textbook it says determine the st standard enthalpy of the following chemical reaction and use the fall use Hess's law in the following chemical reactions uh, so these are the steps that we're going to modify here to produce this compound right here. So what I like to do is first start off by going ahead and writing down that chemical reaction right below all of these steps here. So this is the answer that we want to end up with here. And now I'm going to look up at the top and find out is everything in the right position. So first off, I need to have the carbon graphite on the left side, and I do. And I need the H2 on the left side, and I do. And this molecule here is on the wrong side, the acetylene. So I need to move that over to this side. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this third chemical reaction around. And when I flip that, I also have to change the sign. I'm going to change that to positive. 2,599 kilojoules per mole. Now it looks like I'm also going to have to do some modifying of the amounts of these chemical reactions because I need to have two graphites. Up here I only have one graphite. So I'm going to take this chemical reaction, I'm going to multiply it by two. When we do that, we're going to take the coefficients, that's the number in front, and we're going to multiply those coefficients by two. Just to note, we never mess with these subscripts down here, these little numbers in any chemical reaction. They have to stay the same. It's only these numbers in front. If you don't see anything, that would just represent a one. So I'm going to multiply this by two, so I'm basically just going to add a two in front of everything in this compound. Now since I multiplied that by two, I also have to multiply this enthalpy by two. And so that's going to become 788 kilojoules per mole. That is negative 788. I'm also going to have to modify this third equation. This one is showing uh, two of these C2H2 molecules, and I only want one. So I'm going to divide all of this stuff by two. And so that takes all these coefficients and cuts them in half. So these were two and they became one. I don't have to write anything if it's just one. And then over here, I'll just say it's five over two for now. If I divide all this by two, I have to divide this by two as well. And that becomes half of this amount right here, which is 1,299.5 kilojoules per mole. Now I can hold, go ahead and start canceling things. So I have two CO2s here, two CO2s there, opposite sides, so they cancel. On this side, I have a total of two and a half oxygens, and right here I have two and a half oxygens. That'd be five divided by two, so those cancel as well. And then also these waters will cancel, and I'll be left with just the two graphite, the H2, and then the C2H2, which is what I want. Now I can go ahead and add up all of the enthalpies, and I end up with the total enthalpy change of positive 226 kilojoules per mole.